Well, good evening. My name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm here for, from EdChat Interactive. And tonight, uh, we're going to have Dennis Glynn, who's going to be bringing us through creating a micro learning app in under an hour. And he's also, he's also going to be covering what you have to do to prepare so that your, your micro learning app really hits the mark. Um, I found it really fascinating. He and I have spent a good deal of time talking before, before this. Um, many of you, most of you have heard of EdChat Interactive. I'll just like quickly show you, you know, edchatinteractive.org. We have a bunch of other webinars coming up. They're all free. Some of them are based on augmented reality. Some of them are based on play. Uh, tomorrow is one mostly for K-12 teachers where we're going to be talking with Ralph Singh, who's a storyteller, about stories that will help calm students during turbulent times. So that should be an interesting one also. But um, I'm going to stop my share so that uh, Dennis can share his screen. And rather than me describe all the different things that Dennis has done, I think he can probably do it better. So, uh, so Dennis, um, why, don't you, why don't you start? OK, well, thank you, everybody. Um, I'm glad to be here. First of all, before I, I start talking, please open up Articulate Rise so that you can actually, this, this is learn by doing. And that's what micro learning apps are all about. So before I even tell you anything about myself, just make sure that you have Articulate Rise open on your computer. Okay, now. The great thing about uh, what I have been doing, for the, I joined uh, Northwestern University in 1997 and progressed to a variety of, from the manager of the advanced media production facility to uh, assistant dean and the director of distributed learning um, for the university. And that's where I got involved in building virtual environments for learning. And then the university eventually uh, opened up a, um, a satellite conference uh, campus in Qatar. And so distance learning and virtual learning are integral to the university. In, um, in 2007, I left the university to go build the uh, prototype for the um, portal for surgical resident education in the United States. And so all the surgeons that... Okay, uh, big guy, I'll be back. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, so, but, but that's enough about me. I, um, so I have been building a learning environments mostly for the healthcare industry. And the learning environments um, need to have... Um, number one, an assessment building. So learning by by doing is fine, but you need that immediate feedback coming back. So I'm hoping that that's going to happen. Hopefully, Mitch will mute themselves. Okay, sorry. Uh, are, are you going to show your slides? Excuse me? Dennis, are you going to show your slides? Yes, I okay. was going to do that. Okay, great. Okay, okay. Right. and and I also would would like to say if you're not talking, if you could uh, possibly mute your mics because there's some background noise. I've been trying to find people. Like there's a beep now. Great, thank you. Okay, so the, first of all, let me tell you the Serious Play Conference is a fabulous fabulous conference. I've been going to it for seven or eight years. I presented the last five years. Um, it's uh, not only the top people in uh, the, literally the world, coming to, together to share their excitement about how um, games and the learning environments can um, help the world. So with that, um, I'm going to move forward and so these slides, by the way, are uh, going to be saved for you in the recording. But I wanted to show you some of the things that I built, just a quick thing. This is for nurse anesthetists, and this is for them to practice 
setting up the anesthesia machine for a new patient they go before they go into the operating room. And then they get feedback on whether they set it up correctly for their, their client. So it's very important to have these kinds of tools. And I just thought I'd let you know, I can share more ideas about these things later uh, in the presentation. The other thing I gave you is a tool that we use in business school. And I thought it was appropriate for what we're doing. Because even though we're authors of these, uh, these apps, we need feedback from other people. We need to make sure that the subject matter experts also are on the same boat, that everybody's working together and coming up with the same idea. So um, I sent you that. I hope you, you did it, you, you worked with it. But um, the key thing is the value proposition. And I sent you a link to uh, Clayton Christensen, unfortunately, he passed away last month. It was very sad. Um, but he came up with the disruptive uh, innovations. And, uh, and, but the, what he did do is one of the things that I'll never forget is the value that the customer wants is when they buy something, they, don't, they buy it because it does something for them. It's a job. It performs. A, a job for them. So when you buy flour in the store, you're buying it to do something with it. Or if you're buying sugar or whatever it is. So you want to make sure not only in when you're creating um, learning uh, objectives that you tell your the people that you're doing what exactly is the value that they're going to. Remember what's in it for me. So all of these things are important, but once you do that and you share all this information with, with your team, you then come up with the key activity. And the key activity today is building a micro-learning app within 15, 20 minutes at using Microsoft Rise. Now let me go back. Any of the software that I deal, that I'm going to talk about today, I have no interest, I have no financial interest in any of it. I wish I did, but I don't. <laughs> so, but I wanted to give you something that is easy. It's fast. It lets you do something and get it out there. And then once you have a template build, you can build these all over the place. So if you go to your mic, um, your articulate and you click on new course, I, I I, I want you to select a blank course because I'm not going to get involved in templates, but we're going to build it with your material, hopefully, from a blank course. So we're going to lo load this. I would like to get rid of the pictures. Okay. So now I have a blank canvas. And um, I hope that all of you have uh, some elements available to you. So my elements. I kept in a um, in a word file. So I'm going to do a copy, and then I'm going to go over to here, and I'm going to click on here, and I'm going to put in here, and now I have a title. That's simple, easy. Now you can put the author in, or you can hide the author. So, or you have multiple authors. My picture comes up because when I first loaded um, uh, Acrobat 360, I put my picture in there and it automatically comes up. So then the next thing you want to do is you want to describe your course. So the easiest thing to do is that's where you're going to talk to them about what it's all about. So I'm just going to grab some text. How are we doing, guys? Are we, uh, uh, are we following along? I'm, I'm following. Pardon? I'm following. I'm okay. following. Good. And so now yes, we have I'm following as well. Good. So it, it's that. Okay. I'm now unmuted, right? Right. 
You can hear me now? Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. So now I, I put in some text, but here's the key. We're going to go back a little, and I'm going to show you in the slides in a minute. But now what I want you to do is I want you to go to the settings. And the settings are important. We're not going to spend a lot of time on all of these other, the navigation, the translation, the labels. This is all something that you can play with. So if you're doing something in multiple languages and all kinds of things, but oftentimes you may have a company logo. So I have a company logo. So I'm going to just add it. And the, there, and then maybe I want a cover photo so it makes this interesting. So I have a cover photo and I'm going to upload the photo. And I'm going to select this and I'm going to open it. Okay. Now, there's one last thing I wanted to show you. You can customize the theme based on what text you want and what font you'd like to have. But you notice it came up with a yellow or an orange um, default um, color scheme. Now, my son went to Syracuse, so he's a big fan of, of, uh, of orange. But I am, uh, today we have blue skies here in Chicago. So I'm going to go click on blue and now and now I'm going to close it. And now you'll see I have basically created the beginnings of the course. So let's go back to these PowerPoint slides and see what we did. So we added a blank course, right? New course, and then we added a blank one. And then we put the title in and we Fix the author. By now, you all should have done that. And then this is all, I combined all of these at one time, but um, what you want to do, whoops, I want to go back. Hold on. So um, uh, what it is, is that you can, uh, you can do all these things. I highlighted them so you can see them in this, in this thing. But I, right now, we're just at the theme rather than the other ones. But I I created some pictures of the, all the other ones so you can see what that's about in one slide. And now this is the key. We're now ready to add content. And this is where it gets easy and fun. So I'm going to go back to what we're doing here and I'm going to click on And my course is loading. And you'll see, let's just take a look at it. Right? And here's what it looks like. And so now we want to add a lesson. So all we do is click here, and I'm going to say machine parts review and enter aha and so another lesson shows up if i don't put anything there it won't be there and now all we do is we we click on add content and so i don't want I'm not ready to do a quiz because i've got to give them something to, to test them on so i'm going to create a lesson And this is where RISE becomes this beautiful thing, is it provides what we call custom blocks for filling in information. So there's all different kinds of things. I'm going to go to, you can go to all of these separately, but I'm going to go to all blocks and I'm going to walk you through them. So one is you can see there are various ways of adding text. There are various ways of adding a statement if you wanted to from an author or a quote. You can add a quote too, okay, with a picture of the author. You can create lists, you can create, you can add images, you can create a gallery where the pictures flow 
through. You can have a multiple gallery. There's multimedia. I'm just saying you can be audio, videos. You can embed all kinds of things. Aha, interactive. Now that's what we want to know. We're not going to go past this at this point because we're going to make this first session interactive. And since we're going to create a machine parts list, we're going to grab this, click on graphic image, and then we're going to close this. And then you'll see there's an edit and settings here. You're going to click on the edit and you're going to go down here to the bottom and see where it says edit. And we're going to upload, we can do it from a, a, a search content library, but we're going to op open up an image that I want to have you to t be tested on, which is machine parts. Now you'll see that some of these like this, this is, I'm, I've already created some areas where I want to make sure it is. So I'm going to put this on top of that. And I'm going to put this on top of here. And um, so item number two, we could name it. We're going to do it carbon dioxide. No, let's see. No, dioxide. Diox I D E. There we go. And I could put in any text I want. So I'm going to say uh, describe. the part, but I would put more in. And then I could add media to it if I want to, video or a picture or whatever it is. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna upload media. And I have a, a picture of the carbon dioxide absorber. So I'm gonna open that, okay. And the other thing I wanna do I could put, I, I, let me, I just say, uh, this is uh, on off switch. Again, I could add any text I want. I could put media in. I'm going to record a description of what I want. The on off switch allows you to control the machine during critical uh, times in the operating room. And um, uh, since I have my headset on, you'll have to take my uh, word that there's audio there. I'll take my headset off in a minute and you'll be able to hear it, okay? So now I'm gonna close this and let's go preview this and see what it looks like. The nice thing about this is that we can see this in various forms of uh, whether it's a, a tablet or a, um, an, a phone, a smartphone. So you'll be able to see what, what this looks like in all the different elements to make sure that your, your material looks good. So I'm going to go back to the desktop and I have now, um, if I click on here, I now have the description of what this is and an audio file on it. And the other one is here, carbon dioxide, describe the part and the image comes up. So you can add all different kinds of things to this very, very quickly and easily. Dennis, do you know if it's possible, to, first of all, for like an image like this, to make people go in a certain sequence, or could they click anywhere? Well, I wanted them to be able to go anywhere. Right. You could, you could set it up where there was a sequence of things. Yes, 
Or, and they'd have to go from item to item. And then is it possible if they're on this page to not let them advance from this page until they've, they've clicked yes, on everything? I'm, get, I'm getting to that. You're way ahead of me. Oh, God, I, got, I hate these A students. You know, they, they're, all, they're all over you. They can't wait for the material. Yes, you, I'm going to show you that. Right. I'm from New York. Nobody said that I'm patient. Oh, you, okay. So here's the thing. So I'm going to go back to edit. And I'm going to go down here to the end of this thing. And I'm going to hit a continue button. And then I'm going to click on here. And I could edit this. And I can go here and say, completely block directly above or complete all blocks above before you can go on. Do you see what I mean? Isn't that nice? So you have to do this before you can go on. I'm going that's, to do that's none. great. That's great. Okay. So thank you for asking about that. And then I, I, there's another thing. Again, the padding, I don't like a lot of padding. So I'm going to go to 10 and 10 and I'm going to close this. And so everything is close. Now you'll notice that when I go over something, and plus, if I wanted to insert something in advance, what I didn't do here is I didn't give them a description of why it's important that they do this. So I'm going to put in a paragraph of materials. And I'm going to say, let me go to here to my uh, uh, here. And then I say, I had already written this ahead of time. Command copy, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. Mastery of the various controls of the anesthesia machine is paramount to being able to prepare the patient's vitals for surgery. Okay? And so that's how quick and easy, and again, I can change the, I don't like all that space. But that's me. So I moved everything together. So now, where are we at? We're 20 minutes into this, right? And we've created an interactive learning environment, right? Now it comes time to find out whether they learned anything or not. So I'm going to do this very quickly. And, and normally all those pluses that you have are other places that you'd want them to click. Yes. And we're just going through two of them because, you know, we're saving time. But normally you'd set up uh, right. hotspots on all those places. Exactly. They have to know that this is the, the bag, the absorber bag. They have to know that this is the, the controls for setting up the various uh, different um, uh, gases that go in. You know, in other words, you, you, you've got to, this is how you learn how to do it. And then eventually we would hook you up to a, uh, hook this machine up to a, um, a virtual patient and you would then see how it worked on the virtual patient. Okay. That's, that's, that's down the line. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, but it, it's the beginning. So now what we want to do is we now want to do a knowledge check, right? So let's just do something easy, which is a multiple choice thing. Okay, so we're going to close this. And we're going to answer the question here. Which item is the carbon Okay, and I'm going to go edit here, and I want to add another choice, and I'm going to do choice three, and I can add as many as I want, okay, and I want to upload the image, so I'm going to upload media, and I had prepared the same image but now 
And oh, let me go to the settings because I, again, I like the padding to be thin. So now I had added one, two, or three to the image. And so now I wanted to add in, which is the carbon dioxide. And the second one, if I remember correctly, is the correct choice. So I'm going to submit that. Oh, choice one. How did that happen? Incorrect. Take again. Let me just see. Okay. I selected the wrong one. I'm sorry. So now what I have is I have established, and I can go through and create all different kinds of um, questions. So here I'm going to do, I'm going to go here, I'm going to continue. I'm going to now um, add another block. And I may want to select, um, oh, I don't know. Let's take a look at block templates. So there's all different kinds of templates that you can go through that you've created and put them in. Okay. See, I've created these multiple choice templates. So once I, I have something, I can then just re rename it. So I'm going to go in and put in another, um, I'm going to put this template in. And so here was, Again, and I can add in any of these items that I want and move them wherever I want them to be in the edit. So now I have a preview of the course. I have machine parts review, mastery of various controls. I have um, things that they have to look at, find out, listen to. Um, I can go through these that way, but the key is, is that they, you want them to click on them because here's the value of learning. We want to make learning multi-sensory. We want to add not just the pictures, we not at one, not just the text, not just the sound, but we want them to create as many synapses in the brain as they can possibly have in doing something. So there were some, there was an interesting question, or actually there were a few. One oh, question, good. one question is when you, when you make your hotspots, you, you know, right now you're placing a plus over an area for a hotspot. Yes. Can you make it so that uh, the student has to figure out where they should click. I know, I know you can choose different symbols for your hotspots. Is there like a transparent symbol where you can define a hotspot or does it have to be a, um, an image? Uh, uh, hang on a second. Let me go here. I'm going to edit this. Let's take a look. That's a good question. I, to be honest with you, um, um, I would go to the, uh, let me edit this and see here. Marker and marker style. style. And I can go and pick a marker style. Right, but it doesn't look like there's a transparent no. one. That not okay. that one, okay. But um, let me just that, that's a good question. I I could come back to that. Uh, you know, I, I didn't include that in this tutorial because I wanted to make this quick and easy. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um uh, so I mean we're here we are at, at a half an hour and everybody should have created something at this point. So hang on. So another so so another question kind of uh, was when when you're asking your multiple choice, I know you can not just give feedback right or wrong. You can give feedback, you know, uh, paragraph feedback. But it seemed to me you could give feedback in multimedia too. You could, I, but I just want to yes. confirm yes, that that can. okay, yes, it could can. be a video or it could be 
um, right. and audio feedback. Exactly. You can do just about anything. So I, uh, I want you, yes. But the key I wanted to make sure as we go forward is I wanted to, to show you there's a couple things that are really important. And so let's just say we created the app that we wanted to, we could go in and, and add another lesson. So I'm going to say um, machine parts back. Okay. And so I could add content to that and I could create a quiz right away or whatever it is I want. So in other words, I could enter questions, um, but uh, I'm gonna go back. Um, but what I wanted to make sure is that when you go back, the key thing now, here is the beautiful thing about this, is that let's say we got this rapid prototype, we built this right away, and we want the subject matter expert or somebody to look at it, right? And so I can command copy and I can go to an email. Uh, where is my, uh, bear with me. Uh, and I'm going to compose. And Mitch, I'm going to send this to you. All right. And I'm just going to just say link at this point. Oops. I'm going to send that to you. While you're doing that, I'm going to go back here to, um, and I'm going to go to review. And I'm going to click on review. And I'm going to create a new item, but I'm going to put a little um, A on here. And I'm going to create this. Publish. Sorry. And I'm going to view this. Okay, and you should know that I did get the email. Okay, I, mean, I want you to show the email that you got. Okay, so I'm going I'm to, Yeah. Uh, you have to unshow, stop showing and then I can- Stop showing, can show. okay, thank you. Okay, and then I will share. And um, so here's, here's the email right here from Dennis. Okay. It has a link in it. And if I click the link, I end up with the course. And this right. is the way a course looks. And this is the way it looks. So start the course. So now your, your people, whoever you're working with, can show, you can show them exactly, they can go through it. Now that's, this is for them to play with and work with. It. But then what I did, so now I'm going to take the screen back. Okay, so I'll I'll let you, I'll, I'll stop sharing, but let me just ask you also because this was a link, but could you embed your course as like an iframe? Um, I'm not sure I understand. What do you mean by an iframe? Um, so just just like in if you you can embed a you know an, an HTML you could embed a YouTube video within a web page oh, if I had okay. my own pay you know web page could I embed this course inside my own web page absolutely you okay. all you have to do is give them that link okay okay so what I did so I'm gonna I'm gonna and you have the screen. it's back you can share yeah I'm gonna share my screen let me just show you so now what happened is that I shared I've now created a review. And so whoever I send that to, they can review it and give me feedback. So I'm going to, um, so now I'm going to send you the link. Again, I want feedback. What, so there are no comments yet, but I want to um, go back here. Hang on. 
sedotan paruman kawan. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. I have to go to here. So rise automatically sent me the review is ready for. So now I'm going to send you you in rise. So it automatically and then I could send that link to whoever I want. Okay, hang on. Why is that giving me talking? I want to get rid of that. It's in the wrong spot. Okay. Um, here's the link. I just so I'm going to send this link to you, Mitch. Now I'm going to give you stop sharing. Okay, I've not gotten the second one yet, um, which is strange because uh, I'm looking <laughs> at my email. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, so now I, I'm going to uh, I'll I'll share my screen, and you see my email here. And I'll click on it, and here we go. And so here now I have it. you can add in your comment. So add a comment. Okay. Um, okay. So my email address. Uh, next, and then my comment. Um, I really hate blue. How about orange? I thought I went to Syracuse, but I, I uh, sympathize with your son. <laughs> okay, so what's happened here, so I'm gonna show you, stop sharing your screen. Oh, wait, oh, something, I did something wrong here. And I wanna share my screen. And here it is. Can you see that? So you can get instant feedback on how you're doing, work with the team. That's the beauty of this, is that you're no longer working alone. You're working virtually with whoever you want and getting all kinds of feedback on how you're doing. So here we are, 37 minutes in. Um, let me go back to the PowerPoint presentation and review what we did. So what we did is we've added a course title, right? And we've added a first lesson. And then we added a graph, a label graphic. And we edited the label graphic and we added different things to it. And um, then we added some text, and then we added a, a divider between them and uh, was able to uh, make sure that they completed the first assignment or they moved on, or we, they could do it at any time, but it's there, available to you. And then we added uh, another lesson, and we added uh, a test, it test your knowledge. And we've added a multiple response or a multiple choice. And um, we've added, we put in a question, we put in the choices for them to pick. And let me go back. So now we've, we've built the app. We have feedback, they can, you can build all different kinds of interactive uh, testing, your quizzes, whatever you'd like. Um, 
I'm not a, in favor of basically um, just reviewing and getting multiple choices, not the way I like things. I like um, putting in actual questions where they have because sometimes um, they can guess. But again, all of this goes into your LMS or you can upload it, you get the feedback, you get all the data that you want. And I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna go into, into how to upload that to it, but um, it, it, it's available. I just wanted to concentrate on how to build an app, okay? And would, would you, um, if you wanted to gamify the learning, would you gamify it within these micro learning apps or is that something you would do in the LMS? You know, how would you gamify this? Okay. Um, that's uh, okay. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's just a short question. Well, it's not a short question. No, no, it's a, it's a little long answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a short question, but it's a complex answer because you could do it a variety of ways. Uh, number one is that you would do the gamification using um, uh, media or links that you would put into it. So you could leave this and go to what I would call what we're going to get in the workshop coming up, um, the, the next uh, apps that we're gonna use, Sketchfab or Zappar, where you could actually gamify it. And, and I was gonna show you that at, in a little while. But um, the, the whole idea is that this is a, a canvas that you can do anything you want in because you can put links to it you could put YouTube videos in, you could put anything you want, you could put interactive um, uh, uh, sessions that you want. Uh, you know, I, I could go in and, um, all right, let me, let me show you, uh, you. Well, I'm interested actually, I think people would be really fascinated because this, what we've gotten here is a really good explanation and a chance to, to try out you know, this one, you know, uh, articulate, but, um, if you're going to, if you have Zephyr and, um, Sketchfab yeah. and we only have about 20 minutes left, well, plus or minus, um, you know, it'd be really cool to see some of these other apps as well. Unless you have, unless there's a, I mean, well, there may be some really important features that you haven't shown here. Well, uh, you actually, I went too fast. I should have gone slower. Sorry. Are there any other questions before we go to that? question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, how to create something like leaderboard? Is that possible with Articulate? I didn't. Did you get that? Could you try? I didn't. Uh, sorry, I couldn't quite hear the question. Okay. Uh, my question. My question is about creating leaderboard. Something that show how is the progress uh, of the participants? Oh, leaderboard. Who has finished, who has not done anything yet? Right, that would be really part of the gamification question, kind of. Could you, could you do a leaderboard here, or would you, if you no, embedded this with it, it, yeah, you do, do it within it, an LMS, right? I would do it within an LMS. Okay, this is really just the individual. This is, this is. Quick here, apps. Bear with me, hold on. You 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 really uh, went ahead of the game here. Let me let me go to the next. Uh, um, so anyway, um, sharing review. We went through that. Um, I showed you how to do that. I showed you that. I showed you the link. I showed and, you. And and Tati, who's here, um, has said that it's possible. It's really easy to export and articulate as a score module or yes. a web page or a PDF or to be embedded in your site and it can be LTI integrated. So for people who, I mean, you know, if you're at the point in your learning design that those mean something to you, it's really cool to know. I don't think we have time to go through those in detail here, but Tati, thank you so much for letting us know that we have the capabilities. Thank you. So the, the, the workshop that we're going to do at Serious Play is we're going to work with two other programs. And this is more of uh, uh, some of the things that you, we're going to work with 3D Sketchfab and create uh, games with using 3D 
uh, environments. And then also in the workshop, we're going to use Zephyr. And that's where, because everybody has a, um, a, uh, a smartphone, we're going to start creating games within the smartphone environment that Zephyr has. So that's where we're going in the next, uh, into the workshop. Well, that'll be cool. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I didn't know how long it was going to take. I, um, maybe I went too fast, maybe I went too slow, um, but I, I wasn't sure. Why don't you talk about this? Well, okay. And actually, so there were two things. One, I think we really glossed over your first slide, which is kind of setting up the learning objectives. You had, um, you know, the, the, the business proposition, but I can just go over this slide. And just to say that what you've just shown is one example of an app that sets up interactives for learning and, you, and you've demonstrated and people have had a chance to, to, to try it um, to see how easy it is. This Articulate is one. There are other apps that you or other um, creation environments that you can you can try as well. Uh, Nobly has about 10 different interactives um, and you can you know uh, imp import into an into an LMS as well. Um, H5P.org has about 15 different interactives. H5P.org is completely free. Um, the problem is, is you with H5P.org is you can't get the data um, of whether somebody completed it or got it, get it right and put it into um, your LMS. Um, but H5P.org is related to H5P.com. And, and if you pay for license, you can in H5P.com. Um, and then um, Wanda VR allows you to create 3D, 360 photos, so 300, you know, uh, photos of your environment. Um, and then you can set up interactives just the way we just did on Articulate. Um, we've, uh, we've used uh, Wanda VR to set up virtual escape rooms. So you're, you, you set up a 360 photo of an area, let's just say that it's a, um, um, a manufacturing plant and you create, and you have problems within that plant. And unless people solve those problems in the plant by moving around the plant, um, they can't get out of the plant um, in, in a virtual space. Uh, ThingLink is similar to one to VR. Um, I have never, I've not set up a virtual escape room in ThingLink, but it also uses 360 photos with hotspots for interactive. And then Muzzy Lane Author is something that's, uh, is very robust, but it does have a learning curve. Um, in Muzzy Lane Author, um, you can set up training it or, and learning interactives for um, where people go through a dialogue. So your learner becomes one person in a group of people and they're typing in responses based on questions and comments that this other group of virtual avatars are posing to them. And so since we're, and since we're all um, social learners, you get the feel of your learning from other people. So these are just other applications that, um, that are available that, um, well, the first four work somewhat similar to, similarly to articulate Muzzy Lane author is different, but I thought it, we'd include that as well. I hope that's helpful to people. Um, so but your slide, two slides above where you do the value proposition. Yeah. To me, this is like such, you know, when you went through this with, with, with me, this is such a key aspect of design because if you think through this first, the rest of what you're doing is really just following um, a recipe at the, a recipe for success. So can you just go through, if you were, when you design a course, cause you've designed a lot, you know, how do you think about the value proposition, who you're talking to, who are your partners? How do you think about these different things? Okay, let me, let me go. Uh, I wasn't prepared to do that. Oh, but sorry. I, I, no, 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 no. So the, the, the first, okay. Look, I can do this, but everybody saw what the value proposition with the, the, the business model canvas looks like, right? 
And so the first thing I do is I send the business model canvas to everybody in the team. And I have everybody then, we start with, again, Clayton Christensen, what's the job that has to be done? And um, how, um, the, the, the interesting thing is that most of us teach or work in, uh, at least in, in higher education, in macro um, learning environments, where uh, everything's broken down into um, uh, learning objectives. The, and when you work in the corporate world or in the healthcare, sometimes there's a new software app or there's something, and the people need instructions right away and they have to get on it, and they only have. Um, seven or eight minutes to play with it and to learn something from it. And that's where this particular business model canvas really comes to, to light, is because it forces everybody on the team to talk about what is the value that we deliver. And then once we, once we have that, then we go to, um, are there different customer segments? Are there, in other words, is, um, I'll give you an example. I work with nursing schools, and so, or, and I also work with surgical residency programs. And a surgical residency program is five years in length. So I don't want to give a fifth year resident the same program that I would give a first year resident, and vice versa, because they're not ready for it, or they're, it would be boring to them. So we want to, be able to identify who it is we're talking to, what it is they need, and how are we going to help them solve the job that has to be done. And, and that's what this is all about. And then we can go in and we can pick the, the partners that we need. To, so um, how many different subject matter experts do I have? Do I have more than one? Do I need uh, multiple suppliers? Do I need um, uh, and then what resources do I, that I need? So I define all of that in a, in this document. And then we send it around and we share it and we add things and we, we keep coming up with what we would call our first prototype information set. And then I go in and I create a rapid prototype it could be in any number of programs. It could be, um, and I, again, I could show you, um, you know, I only have a couple minutes. Let me, let me um, uh, bear with me for a second. I'm gonna go uh, uh, here. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna take so you can hear it. Um, Well, thank you for going through that because to me, that's what celebrate. That's what separates a master instructional design person from somebody who just knows some packages. Because when you think of the learning from the standpoint of what does this person need to learn and where are they coming from, that's when you end up with something that's incredibly valuable. And then here. the tool that you use helps you. Yeah. So oh, here is you don't want to listen to Despacito. Here, I'm gonna just show you something very quick, uh, uh, just a short video. Uh, I don't have it here, let me see. Hold on, it's here, I think. So here is a program that I created for opiate training and development for uh, nurses. and. Um, this is an actual environment, and you, I don't know if you can hear this. Hello, Mr. McCain, how are you today? I am in a lot of pain. Can you hear that, by the way? Yes. Please tell me more about But now it's stopped. So now, Dennis, can you hear us, or are you locked? Because you may be locked. Patients that they're on, okay, and then come up with an assessment. Sometimes more. 
How did, how did you get the oxycodone and morphine prescription? My primary care doctor prescribes them. So to me, this is a game. Okay. Right. And and um, can you send that link so that uh, when I put it up on the archive page, people can get to this link also? Absolutely. Great. Thank you. So in other words, and I have a slew of these, um, but I, I just wanted you to know that um, you literally go through and you actually have to treat the patient. So you inspect them, you, you, you go through, and then what happens eventually, you, you, know, you, you look at all of the, the, the um, here I'll, so I, I created this real quick video, but you literally, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to go through and come up with a diagnosis. Um, and then you have to treat the patient and then you get feedback as to whether you did it or not. Okay. So, and then you, uh, we also always give them the resources that are available to them that are usually from the CDC or whatever it is, wherever they're, they need to get this material. Okay. And you also can review the case notes. So this is the kind of things that I built. So That's it's great. not a typical game. It's a, a, a really a learning and assessment environment. Uh, you know, that, that it, and this is the job they need to do. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yep. How are we doing? Uh, that, was, that was good. One person had a comment that I think I asked, answered correctly. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. Go ahead. Um, oh, wait, I got to stop. Right, you, yeah, you're going to have to stop the video also, I think. Yeah. Uh, Denise asked, when she, when she was using Articulate and she added a video, there was a preloaded video that came. And, she, and, and how do you get rid of that video? And I, it seems to me there was an edit button. Yeah, it's d delete um, okay. here. Uh, oh, and Tati is answering it. There's a so. preloaded video in in what I sent her. No, no. If she, when she when when she was making her own learning yeah. uh, application, um, and she added a video to it, a it comes up as a preloaded video. Um. What does that mean? Well, if, if you if if you go into your articulate and you just okay, kind of hey. added a video, I think. Okay, wait. I'm going to do that right now. So bear with okay. me. You okay. Just go into. Much. It's the same as uh, when you uh, change a, a photo. It it places a, a generic photo in there. Right. It was a sky shot. So of it the just beach. right. Right. So it, it places a, a generic video in, and all you have to do is hit edit, and then the side menu comes up and then you can replace that sure. that meant with another uh video okay edit content i'm gonna you don't see my screen do no we you? don't see your screen but you can share um where am i at um zoom share screen i'm sorry can you see this now yes okay so any place I go, if I want to go, I click on the edit button here. And then I can go down and take anything out I want. Do you see there's a delete here? Yes. So I can delete it and item removed. So in other words, I can do anything I want and it's gone. Do you, is that, does that helpful? Does that help her? I think, yes, I'm holding. So be that 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 answered the question okay so uh, just remember that there, there's an edit button on every one of these things up in the upper left and with, we're next to the settings and you can do anything you want to it at that point okay good now if somebody had some ideas and or questions and they wanted to get in, in contact with you how would they do that I've included my email address um, so they can just contact me and uh, I'd be happy to chat with them. Okay. Now, the next, the, the workshop is going to be really exciting because we're going to do um, 3D environments and augmented reality environments. And that's the, and um, if you have a chance, you can go to Zapbar and see the games 
that they've created in, um, in augmented reality um, that are just fabulous. And, um, um, and the so example I, that you showed of the patient diagnosing the patient, was that done in Zappar? No, that was done in another program. But okay. It does, but the, the thing that I, um, here, hang on, bear with me. So there are all different kinds of, but it's basically the Zappar works um, is, is to work with things in, um, in, um, for smartphones, mm -hmm. gaming and smartphones and things like that. So if you want to take a look at it and see what it's going to look like, I'm going to very quickly in a short period of time, teach you how to use the, the software and to create your own app that you can immediately publish to your smartphone. Right, and that's or, part of Sirius, know. that's what you're doing at Sirius Play in June. Yes, exactly. Right. Yep. But this is a fabulous program and uh, it allows you to do a lot of really interesting things. And they have in their showcase, uh, let me just see here. You use your phone. I don't know if you can see this. Yep. Right it's now. The QR code. And then it, what happens is it opens up on your, and now you play the game, the Lion King, and you do all the things that you want. Mm -hmm. on that and then we're going to do that during the uh so i don't know if that gives you an idea of the kind of things that we're going to build with zapar wow okay i tend to build things that are um you know how to do things <laughs> but right. uh, that doesn't mean that we can't do things that are fun and and uh and um are are good for commercial items Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. And you primarily, when you're developing, you're primarily developing for healthcare. That's right. Yeah, that's primary. That even though I've done things for law and I've done things for pharma, but most of the things that I do is in the healthcare industry. That's great. Well, nursing and surgery. Well, thank you. Um, My pleasure. Oh, so so actually, a couple people have asked the the. The medical piece that you showed on the YouTube channel, two people have asked, what what was the platform you used to develop that? Unity. Unity. Okay. Okay. Um, right. So Unity takes more than three hours to learn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you can get started with it. Um, they have a wonderful slew of tutorials and you can... Uh, you can download the trial version of it and get started on it. The yep. other thing, by the way, is that Amazon has, um, um, oh God. The, I just forgot their name too, their, their virtual environment. Right. And they, that's a fabulous thing. And there's one other thing I wanted to, I could show very quickly. And actually that, we, um, if you go to our archives page and you look at Enrique Cachaferro's uh, he showed how to do an escape room using the Amazon environment. It was fascinating. Okay, so hang on one second. I wanted to show you one thing real quick, if I can find it. And Enrique is going to be teaching at, Seri at Serious Play also. So, oh, is he? Yep. Okay, hang on one second. Let me see if I can go to this real quick. Uh, workshop. Um, Naturally, when I'm working for, uh, no, that's not it. Um, uh, wouldn't you know? Uh, Sumerian. Um, I had the. Um, Sum I, Sumerian I do a lot is of Amazon's, things in, right. 
I do a lot of things in um, in uh, natural language acquisition and with mm. avatars, and I wanted to show you that. But uh, naturally, when I want to find it, of course, uh, my brain's dead. Well, it's a well, it's a, it's an hour earlier where you are. It's it's um, nine o'clock here. Oh, okay. And the other people may be in other time zones. Right. Well, the, certainly Europe. It's very late there. Yes. Let me see. Is this it? Is this it? No. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, we well, they'll would, have to. I'll they'll have to email, email you. Right. Job. Right. And and or email you. Okay. Well, right. I'll 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 see you. I'll see you in Florida, um, yes. and probably or, see you online bef before then. Or uh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank and, you for uh, uh, doing this. Well, thank you so much for uh, for presenting. This was great. Um, I, uh, I some great comments are coming through. A lot of people are saying thank you, um, but um, and especially for me, I really I learned a lot, and um, and I really enjoyed working with you. So um, so thanks. And My pleasure. Uh, I'm a will you be able uh, to send me the the chat so I'll be able to look at them later? Yes, I will. And get feedback. Yep. Yep. And then you'll post the uh, the video of this, right? I'll, I'll post the video. Um, I probably am not going to get to it tomorrow because we have another uh, webinar tomorrow. But uh, certainly by the weekend, um, I'll, I'll post the archive. Terrific. Okay. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you. And um, this is Mitch Weisberg, and I'll sign off for EdChat Interactive. Hope to see some of you tomorrow, and hope to see some of you at future events and at the Series Flight Conference. Uh, good night. Good night. Stay, Thank stay, you. Stay safe, everybody.